Welcome and good morning to New Life Fellowship. Good morning. Hi, morning. Hello. We're glad that each of you are here today. And I know we have some visitors, you know, we do have some visitors. Uh, and my husband has a whole lot of visitors today. Uh, you know, when I have a family reunion, I only have one sister. So that's not a great big miracle when we get together. But he, there's seven siblings in his family, and all seven of those people are back there today. So I, I think that can be classified as a miracle. So, you know, as we were singing this song today, there's nothing our nation needs more than God's grace and mercy. Amen. And as I was thinking this morning about a song, some of you know this song is an old song about wonderful words of life. You know, that's what we need, are wonderful words of life. Let's be an affirmation to people, not a condemnation, you know. It does a whole lot more good when you affirm someone, you lift them up, and you pay them a compliment. It doesn't hurt you, but it might be life-changing for that person. So let's remember to be kind. That said, I'm going to be kind today because I'm going to offer chocolate to anyone that had a birthday or anniversary. See, I didn't forget. Someone had a birthday or anniversary this week. This week. This oh. week. This week. This or coming this week. week, you do have one. No, we don't. You did have one. But it's You're not going to have one. <laughs> they really like to confuse me, and y'all know how bad my brain is. But anyway, I told y'all last week. Okay. So that being said, um, I don't think there's any special announcements this week. Uh, it's just when I say that, yes, G. Do you have a special announcement? It's very yes. special. Okay. Very special. Okay. Very special. very special. How many minutes do I need to give you? Casey, how much time do I have? I've got two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> okay. I'll see if I can talk okay. fast. And I still have one announcement. Oh, you do your announcement first. No, ladies I'm going to do my last. No, ladies first. <laughs> no, I'm going to do my... I'm trying to be a gentleman Don't. here. <laughs> one minute, 30 Good. seconds. Now, see, you use that 30 seconds of your time. <laughs> We're doing our fall festival thing again this um, year here in about two weeks, October 27th. We need candy. You know, children like candy. I, I don't know why they like candy. Do, 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 you, know, do you know why, Arlene? <laughs> it's read into us, brother. Oh, like okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, we're going to be playing some games. We're going to be... Um, we're going we're to have some hot dogs and stuff for everybody. So you invite your family, your friends, your Kids. Where is it? We're going to be at Anna Becker Park. Okay. I forgot about that. Thank yeah. you. That's a, good point. That's a good detail. We're also going to be there from 2 to 5. Okay. Well, 3 to 5. 3 to 5, sorry. 2 is when I'm doing setup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but well, something else we're going to add into it. Last year we didn't do it. This year we're going to add into it. We're going to have gospel tracks for everybody. Or uh, they're actually little life books. They're the Gospel of John plus a go uh, the gospel message with it. And we're going to be doing, trying to do a little bit of street evangelism while we're at it. So keep that in prayer, too. These next, these next two weeks, please be in prayer about this. Pray for these guys that are going to be doing this. So, there. Do you use it all? I think he's got like 10 spare seconds. Oh, I... Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Gene. We'll all be there on October the 27th. October 27th, 27th. yes. Okay. And the other announcement I had, you know, I've kind of been teasing Casey a little bit about this, but uh, it's, pra it's Pastor Appreciation Month. This whole month is Pastor Appreciation. And I'm not sure where a son-in-law falls into it, but someone was trying to tell me that I have to distinguish the difference there. So I'm, I'm going to try and appreciate you and be nice to you for the next two weeks. You only have two weeks, so don't forget your pastor. Tell him that you're appreciating. See that camera? It's recording what you said. <laughs> okay, but we do appreciate Casey. And so y'all let him know for the next couple of weeks that it's pastor appreciation. So. Okay, that being said, he said he would like to do a short announcement. So if you'd like to come now, you can have the mic. I get 30 minutes of time, but I'll use a little bit of it on this one. I'll okay. take it away from the other one. Okay, two minutes. <laughs> two or ten? No, two. <laughs> well, I, ho I hope you're here for like two o'clock. We can hang around. 
Uh, I just wanted to announce that we're going to start our new Wednesday night Bible study this week, 6 o'clock. The study that we're going to be uh, using is called Connected, and it's really a look at what roles the people of the church have when we come together as a church. Uh, so I invite you to come Wednesday night. We're going to do six weeks study. It's only about an hour and a half each Wednesday night. We're, we start at 6, and we're sure to get you out by 7.30. Uh, we got kids that are here for our youth or, or kids that are here with Debbie. Uh, so we got places for kids to come if you're interested to join in. A uh, little update to give you. I'm still taking up my two minutes, so I'm all right. A uh, little update to give you. We started our tutoring program last Wednesday. Uh, we had uh, two of our own students come, but none of the other Boleyn schools kids came, which is kind of expected. We, we did that same kind of thing last year, that the first few weeks that we started our tutoring did not happen. Guess when tutoring picks up? Guess when we get a huge influx of registrations? After report cards. As soon as conferences happen and those parents sit down in front of the teacher and the teacher says, you know, this needs to be better. The parent's like, well, what can you do about it? Well, let me tell you what Mr. Goodson can do over there at New Life Fellowship. they got a church that wants to help you out. So I've been doing some recruiting through the teachers, not going to directly to families, but doing it through teachers. So when those conferences start, those teachers can pass along our information, and we should be getting an influx of kids here in about two weeks or so. But if you're interested, you're welcome to, to come and help us on Wednesdays. But please, pray for those uh, kids that aren't coming. They, there's a reason that they need some help. Are there any other announcements? Any other things going on? Well, Ted, I think we're going to go straight to you. I'll pray and then we'll have you guys play. Father, we just come before you. We thank you again for this day. We thank you for the time that we have to come this week to worship you. But Father, I just pray for a special blessing today. I pray for a blessing for everyone that's here today. I, I know that... Uh, <coughs> That we come together in your name. So I just pray, Father, for this time to be used, for your will to be done in our lives. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. How'd you like your rain? You got to walk on a little bit of water just getting here this morning. Yeah. Amen. I don't think that meant quite the same. <laughs> not, not so miraculous as what you're saying. Yeah. But I have been doing that reading. I, I like that you that you referenced that reading. Um, there's a blessing of getting into God's Word every morning. Amen. There's something that you found there. This morning, I want to give you a little quiz. Now we're going to be. This is going to be. Longer said, sixth grade classroom, so you're, you're welcome to, to raise your hand, okay? And I will call on you. You don't need to yell out and, you know, take, you know, get cuts in front of people. But I'm going to give you a quiz, and it's going to be an easy one. I'm going to show you some pictures. If you recognize the picture that I'm giving you, raise your hand for me, please, all right? Uh oh, let's try that again. Oh. Holy Spirit! <laughs> yes, what is that? Holy Spirit! It's a, mo a memorial. You're right, it's a title slide too. There you go. Now Cassandra, I'm going to test that out. Make sure that's me and not you. There we go. Hey, now it's me. What is this, by the way? Raise your hand if you think you know what it is. Jim, I saw you first. It is, do you know which one? Actually, not Santa Fe, not. Gene, what do you think? Arlington. It is a veteran cemetery. This is the National uh, Cemetery at Arlington, Virginia. Any of you been there? All right. Any of you recognize what this is? Regina, I saw your hand. It's a Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Have you been there? Washington, D.C. on the mall? That is a very moving place. Seeing those families coming in and, and doing their, their scratches on the names, leaving teddy bears and, and other things, pictures, uh, dog tags, uh, that's a very moving place. And when you look at the names, you're seeing yourself. Anybody recognize what this is? Oh, Alberta, what is this? 
It's a statue of that, of that photo from Iwo Jima. You're right. Anybody know what it's called? It's World War II Memorial. It's Marine Memorial. It's, anybody know the location? It's also in Arlington, by the way. All right, one more. Anybody recognize what this is? 9-11. Oh, I saw a little bit more recognition of this one. Somebody go ahead and, and tell me. Gene, what is this? That's World Trade Center. That's World Trade Center. What are those two? I'm going to call them voids because there's really nothing much there now other than water. What are those two voids for? Where the towers did. It's where the two towers were. How many of you recognize this one right away? I thought that would be a little bit recognizable. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you about the idea of memorials. What is a memorial? I heard you remember what some of those places were. Some of you had been to them. You recognize what they were. They were all some sort of memorial. So what is a memorial? A reminder. A reminder? It's a reminder uh, of lives, maybe? Of events, maybe? A reminder that, that somebody lived or, or something happened? Janice, I was looking at this up in, in the dictionary. The Oxford Dictionary says this. A memorial is something, especially a structure, established to remind people of a person or an event. Did you get that in there? It said, especially a structure. Would you categorize each of these pictures that I showed you as being a memorial? First of all, would you, would you agree that they're memorials? Now, were they all structures? Now, does a structure mean the absence of a building? It's really what's, what's important here is the absence of, of a building. Would this count as a structure? Is a structure some architectural four walls and a roof, or is it something that is man-made and is built? Depends on how you define structure, I suppose. Ooh, I like that. It was something that was constructed. So would this be a structure? Mm -hmm. All right. So each of these photos that I was showing you, uh-oh, here we go, has something to do with this verse I want to show you today. Jesus, on the night that he was arrested, went to that Last Supper, and he said something to those disciples that I think is tied into this idea of memorials. Janice, you said it to, re to remember. The dictionary definition is especially it's something, especially a structure established to remind people of a person or an event. On the night of Jesus' crucifixion, what was it that Jesus wanted those disciples, those men that were sitting at that table with him, what did he want them to remember? He was here as a body. He was actually living person with them, not some spirit. They were about to see something happen to them. I think that would be kind of important to remember. Paul, this is in, in Corinthians, and, and if you read it, the 11th chapter in Corinthians, it's kind of a, a famous chapter for Paul writing to the church at Corinth and giving instructions on what they should be doing and literally not doing when they partake of what we today call the Lord's Supper or communion. They were having some issues with some things that they were doing that, that he was afraid that they should, they should stop. And he gave some, in, some instructions to them. And this section, these verses that I'm going to show you come from that section and this is Paul, and he says, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Did you notice that part that Jesus said in verse 24? It's kind of a famous part of the Lord's Supper. Do this in remembrance of me. Now I'm going to contrast something for you. All of those photos that I showed you, your quiz that you all did very well on, congratulations, you get an A, you would pass, your, your parent-teacher conference would be all right. You wouldn't need tutoring, you're all right. But I want, to, I want to contrast something. Each of those pictures that you saw was a memorial. They were literally a structure, a building, even a void with, with water fountain or a statue or headstones that were built, constructed, I love your word, they were constructed to lead future generations to remember what the people of that time did. They were all constructed to remind future generations what had happened. Now here's Jesus. This is the night before he was arrested. He's, he's having that last supper, about to head out to Gethsemane, about to be arrested, about to be crucified. And don't forget, don't ever forget that Jesus went into that night knowing exactly what was going to happen. There was no surprise to it. He knew. So he goes into that supper and he says, do this in remembrance of me. And he hands them bread and he hands them wine. This is my body. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Do you see the contrast there? In this world, when some momentous event happens that we want people to keep in their collective cultural memory, we build a memorial. We build some kind of structure to help us remember that event or those people. Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't go and build a memorial to himself. He handed his disciples broken loaf of bread and a cup of wine. And he said, this is what you're doing to remember me. Why in the world did Jesus not head out and build some monumental statue of himself? Why did Jesus not go and build some huge structure, a church, a temple or something? That sounds kind of the way the world works. Reminds me of another verse. This is from 1 Corinthians, and this is Paul writing. In that same book, Paul writes earlier at the beginning something that actually goes along with that idea of why doesn't God work the same way that we do? This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, right away at the beginning of the book. Starting in verse 24, I want to share something with you. Paul says, But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. <laughs> God doesn't work the way the world does. That's not a spoiler. It shouldn't, should be well understood. That last verse there, God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Reminds me of something. You were talking about your, your Bible reading, uh, doing that chronological Bible, going way back, 
to when Israel was founded, when, when God chose Israel, even? Isn't it kind of surprising that in your Bible, of all the nations that are listed in that Bible, God chose a little tiny tribe of Israel to work his will in this world through Israel. You've heard of Babylon in your Bible, in your, in your reading? We just got through reading about Babylon. You've heard of Assyria? You, you've heard of Rome? Talking about the crucifixion here today. Yet, is there a country, a nation of Babylon today? Is there a nation of Rome? No. God chose little tiny Israel so that he could get glory out of working through Israel rather than the way that the world would work through some world power. A second thing that, that God has done that, that you look at scripture, uh, and this one reminds me of our, our chronological reading again because we were just reading about the nativity. Don't you think it's surprising that the promised Messiah came to earth, was born in a manger, in a stable? God did that. Instead of choosing to come through some powerful king in a palace, some leader in a government, a little tiny baby. And we're talking today about this Last Supper and, and we know what, what's about to happen here in Jesus' life. Don't you think it's surprising that salvation came to us through a death on a cross? That's not the way the world would have expected things to happen. Even, the, even the, the disciples who sat with Jesus that night at that supper would have probably said that they didn't understand what he was trying to tell them. The next day at the crucifixion, even that night at the arrest, they ran away because they didn't understand. God works through ways that the world doesn't. And it's so that God can receive credit God can receive that glory. God can get the recognition rather than saying, well, of course, that's just the way the world works. That's the way things happen. God does things in a special, unexplained way. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all. And look, he used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Today, I want to... I want us to participate in that Lord's Supper, in that communion. I want us to remember Jesus. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, I have some men that have uh, agreed to help us out. Would, would the three of you please come forward? We're going to have this Lord's Supper service. And what I'd like to do is have each of our rows where you're sitting, starting at the front and just working our way back to stand and come up. If you're sitting on this side, would you please, uh, when it's your row's turn, please stand and we'll start with Deb on the front and then we'll work our way back. And please stand and you can step out through here through the middle and then come around and, and Jim will serve you on this side. Uh, same thing on this side, starting on this side from the front, we'll go to the back. When it's your row, you can step out into the middle, come, and, and Danny will serve you on this side, and, and we'll help you get served here. Um, Paul, when he was writing this letter to Corinth, though, like I said, in chapter 11, it talks about the order of service, the, how the Corinthians needed to be more mindful of what they were doing when they were participated in that communion, in that Lord's Supper service. And I would be remiss in my job if I did not remind you all about that today. Paul warned the Corinthians that they should be inspecting themselves. They should examine themselves, is actually the word that he used. That they should examine themselves to make sure that they understand the meaning of what they are remembering. And uh, I think that what Paul was trying to warn them about 
is that they were having uh, regular meals and, and they were having fellowships and, and people were, were rushing to eat and, and some people weren't getting to eat and, and at a meal time, which of course is not really what we're doing here today. But it also could be that Paul was warning people to really look at your heart. <coughs> First of all, I'm certain that Paul's saying that the communion service to remember Jesus' sacrifice is meant for people that believe in Jesus. If you are, are a believer, if you've given your life to Jesus, then that communion service is a time for you to remember that salvation that we, I was just talking about. That salvation is for you, and it's a time to remember that. Um, so I'm going to give you a minute. We're going to pray. I'm going to give you some time to be a little bit solemn and, and a little introspective. And then uh, we'll call up our, our rose to partake. Pray with me. Father, we just come before you today. We thank you again for this time. We just ask you to bless this whole service. I, I know that uh, this is a solemn time, Father, so I ask for for that seriousness and that remembrance of you. I ask for people to look in their hearts to, to find that they've placed you number one in, in their lives. But Father, I pray for us to just partake with you and that your Holy Spirit would be a part of us. And even as we leave here today, that we could just rejoice and, and share your love with those around us. So then next week, we get even more people to come and just be a part of this fellowship and, and be part of you, Father. So, Father, I just ask that blessing today. I pray in your name. Amen. have our, our first row stand up and just come across. There you go. Next rows, you, you're welcome. Don't wait for me. You're welcome to, to come up whenever you have room. And if you take if you take your set, we'll have communion together. to your seat. Just raise your hand and we'll be sure to get someone that can help you out.
Is there anyone else in the auditorium that needs to be served? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sacrifice that we remember today. We thank you for the life that we have in you. We thank you for the future home that we have. We thank you, Father, for, for so many things that are unspoken and, and just sometimes just passes our mind that we don't even bother to, to say thank you to you, Father. But there are so many things that we should and we could say thank you for. So Father, I just ask for you today to bless this time as we just remember you. Now you know that in that verse that I was reading, Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And Jesus went on to say, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. When you read the gospel accounts of that night, that last supper night, The disciples and Jesus left that upper room. It was their Passover. They were together for the Passover. But they left that room singing a hallel. They were singing a psalm of praise. They sang together. Which, by the way, the, the last of, of the Passover hallels is Hebrew, or is uh, Psalms 118. And so if you're interested, you're, you're welcome to to open up your Bible and see what it was that Jesus sang on that last night. But today, since we're here together, Ted, I would ask if you would please uh, have a song for us as we leave here together, just our own version of a halal, if you would. Would you please stand? Take the hand of somebody. 